So uh, Coach Trailer set the table for us to uh, win one day at a time. And uh, it started with our defensive staff with Coach uh, Jess Lelf and Rod Wright, Nick Brown, Zach Brown. These guys done a great job of keeping their guys focused and not only that, but challenging them to learn everything about the game that they possibly could without physically going out there. And uh, the mental part of where we're at right now is really further ahead than I've been in a lot of places at this point in time. Yeah, and seeing your, your SEC background and some of the guys that you've coached in the past, uh, we're going to speak with Solomon Wise in a little bit. Does he remind you of any, I mean, his talent level, his size and those sorts of things remind you of any of the guys that you coached? You know, Solo is a, a special athlete. He has a ton of ability. The thing that we're trying to do is get him comfortable to the new position in our defensive scheme of uh, a 3-4 alignment where he's more of a hybrid guy where he can be involved in coverage as well as rushing the passer. And uh, he has a tremendous skill set. You know, the thing that we got to continue to do with him is create some consistency and uh, create the standard that we're looking for out of him because we really think he can be a game changer. Excellent. Thank you, Coach. Hey, Greg, you're up. Coach, how has the team taken to that new defense that you guys are installing, that 3-4 look? How, how much have they picked up so far? You know, uh, we, we've got a pretty good amount installed for our first, uh, our first practice. I told the guys today that I was really proud of the way that they've uh, adapted to things. And, you know, once again, that goes back to the coaching staff. Those guys uh, taking the system and implementing it to their players, teaching it at a kids level where anyone can go out and play and ultimately at the end of the day it, it goes back to uh, you know getting off blocks making tackles and you know playing with perfect effort and you know schemes just give you an alignment where you start to play but those other characteristics going to determine you know the outcome majority of the time has your vision for this scheme changed at all from when you got here you know as you've gotten to know the players and with limited time to prepare you know, the vision is still the same. Uh, that's to be the best that we can be every time we come out to improve uh, each day. And, you know, just to continue to work on the culture that Coach Trailer is establishing here, from integrity to passion to, you know, being mentally and physically tough. We, we just feel like if we will become a more selfless team, a more selfless defense, that, you know, the sky's the limit. And, uh, probably my expectations have grown somewhat uh, after I've seen these guys because I think we do have enough talent to compete. Uh, we have to have some young guys come in and contribute as well, but probably the biggest scare is, you know, we're not very deep, so we're going to have to stay injury-free. But are you able to be as multiple as you want to be without that spring season and maybe with a little bit of a different fall schedule? You know, uh, I can't tell you because uh, at this point they've adjusted to the things that we've thrown at them. Uh, we'll keep continue to throw defense until they can't handle it anymore. And then at that point in time, we'll know what's our cutoff point. But right now we're just throwing as much mud on the wall as we can and just seeing what's actually sticking and the things that they can retain and understand and the things that we'll go with. Hey, John, you're up. Coach, have you had to simplify – what you guys are doing or simplify the terminology and, and things like that uh, to get them to kind of understand at a quicker pace, or have they been able to uh, kind of hit the ground running with what you guys are throwing at them? Like you said, just throwing everything at the wall and, and they're, they're able to keep up with how you guys are trying to progress as quickly as you can for your season opener. Well, no, sir. Obviously we've had to simplify, but I think you do that every year when you go back and examine uh, the things, your terminology, the way you adjust things, because the game continually changes. But probably the biggest challenge is when you're putting together a new staff. Uh, everyone on defense, with uh, with the exception of Zach Brown, we're all new to each other. So some things they might have called a year ago or at different places. So we're actually taking a lot of my ideas, but we're putting it in the terminology so we all can uh, understand it better and be better teachers to our kids, and maybe they can comprehend it as well. Hey, JJ, you're up. Greg, you're on deck. Coach, can you speak to the, your group of linebackers? Just what what did you see out of those guys the first day? And overall, like, what do you hope to get out of those guys? That's kind of one of the areas last season that was a trouble area, and I know you, you guys have some depth concerns there as well. 
you know, I, I took this job with that being a concern and I, I kind of taking it as a challenge, not only from a defense perspective, but from that linebacker position as well that, you know, we don't plan on being the weak link. We become, we plan on being the strongest link. And how you do that is you, uh, you set a high standard for yourself. You demand, uh, you know, that you become a leader. And what I'm challenging the guys now is to be a quarterback on the field, to be an extension of the coaches and carry, carry out the game plan on the field, the adjustments. And, you know, that becomes a critical part of being a student of the game. And I think I have some guys. I have some guys that have tremendous ability. They have good length. Uh, Trevor Harmison is a guy that comes to mind. Clarence Hicks is another guy that I think can can really have a chance to be excellent players in this league. And, you know, it's a couple of freshmen that we signed. And we got several other guys that I feel real good about now. But everybody kind of looks good in shorts. I think when you put the pads on, it kind of separates the boys from men. So we'll find out who will, who will strike and who won't when that time comes. In the in the secondary, Coach, you had a, a transfer from Oklahoma State come in, and he, I guess he's going to be eligible for you guys. How has Cardwell looked in the walkthroughs and, of course, today? You know, JVL's a guy that's very fast. Uh, he has excellent speed. Uh, he's battling some injuries that he had to overcome when he came from uh, Oklahoma State. And we spent a lot of this offseason helping him rehab to get to uh, the type of player we want him to be. And, you know, we have these tracking monitors on our guys to help us condition them and find out how much they're running and things of that nature. And he's hit a top speed of over 23 uh, this summer. So we feel like, you know, this kid has exceptional speed. He just have to uh, hone in on his technique and really work on being consistent. But he has a big ceiling for us. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Okay, Greg, you're up. <laughs> Coach, who do you see as the guys at the interior linebacker positions who can really step up and support in the run game and, and fill that role? You know, uh, I mentioned a couple of guys before. The guys that stand out to me the most is Clarence Hicks, uh, Trevor Harbison. Uh, those two guys stand out right away, and it's more of their statue and the way they, uh, their speed and their skill set. But, uh, you know, once again, you talk about defending the run, a lot of that is attitude and uh, really wanting to be aggressive and be physical. So uh, I think the guys will separate themselves uh, once the pass come on. You'll find out who some of the guys that are not afraid to uh, mix it up inside. And I think we have some potential. We have a lot of guys that, that we feel confident they can do it. It's just a matter of uh, – getting that chance to go out there and see it done. Hmm. I know Clarence Hicks came here with kind of a, an acumen as a strong pass rusher. Was it a big transition to move him to the middle, or what's that been like? You know, uh, I was surprised when I heard that he was uh, he was an outside linebacker defensive end pass rushing guy. But I could see his athletic ability, his twitch, uh, his speed off the ball. I could see how some of those things would be attractive. And, and what we're going to do in certain packages, we're going to let them be, become a pass rusher. But uh, our number one focus early on will be to stop the run and get as many big guys as possible on the field that can fit the gaps and uh, do what we want to do. When we hit running backs, we want to knock those guys backwards instead of, you know, allowing them to run for big games. You mentioned Solomon Wise. I think DQ Henry as well was moving into a linebacker role. How has he handled that transition from defensive end? You know, DQ's been great. Uh, he's uh, overcome a lot of adversity this summer uh, with the pandemic and him having a child and, you know, the other obligations that it comes with uh, being a student athlete. And I couldn't be more proud of a guy that, you know, he's accepted his new position. He's challenging for a starting spot. And uh, he's a kid with a lot of ability as well. We're hoping that in this scheme that allows these guys to flourish more and be more of an impact player. How different are the responsibilities when you go from defensive end to outside linebacker? You know, the biggest challenge is uh, being able to recognize run from pass. So it's a lot of eye discipline. And uh, you have to have the ability to cover a running back or a tight end man to man. So. We feel like those guys obviously can run well enough. Uh, it's just a matter of can we get them enough reps where they can consistently read their keys and execute at a high level each and every play. 
do you envision having two of those like pass rushing type outside linebackers out there on a given play, or is it more likely you might have one of those guys and like a safety hybrid nickel kind of player? Like, how do you think the defense will look most often? You know, uh, obviously, if we get teams in a true passing situation, we're going to put as much speed on the field. So uh, for me to say that Solo and DQ couldn't be on the field at the same time would be untrue. Uh, it could be where Solo, DQ, uh, Clarence, all of these guys are up rushing the passer if that's what they do best. And, you know, a lot of times we'll dictate that by we'll stop the run on early downs it allow us an opportunity to rush the pass for later on. And if the team's a, you know, high passing team, then we're going to put more pass rush on the field. So uh, a lot of times they'll dictate and the personnel that we're playing and sometimes how we play the game will dictate. But for both of those guys to be on the field at the same time, is no issue. I'll ask you about Rashad Wisdom, too. We're going to talk to him here in a little bit. Uh, you identified him as a leader right away when we talked in the spring. How have you seen him fill that role as you move through the summer and into the fall? You know, Rashad Wisdom, uh, the Wisdom family, uh, Bryce Strong uh, speaks volumes. I, I wasn't well aware of the entire situation, but I was quickly informed uh, once I accepted the job that he was a guy that had tremendous character. He was a guy that was a tremendous worker. He played at a uh, Justin High School who has a great tradition of uh, – having outstanding kids that work really hard and fundamentally sound. So he was a guy I targeted early on as one of my guys. And that guy had to be uh, an extension of the staff. He had to have the characteristics that Coach Trey was looking for. And, you know, on top of the story that his family has went through, how he's handled these situations, uh, it speaks volumes. And, you know, I could go on and on about uh, Rashad Wisdom and the Wisdom family, but, uh, you, you talk about relentless, you talk about strong, you talk about passion. He has all the intangibles that we look for in a defensive player. How about on the field, what role do you see him taking? Like, could he be a linebacker or a hybrid type, or is he a true safety? Where does he fit in? Right now, he's playing a hybrid position for us where it's kind of a strong safety and sometimes more of a linebacker. Uh, he'll be required to cover man-to-man -man on receivers like uh, defensive back would. And he's going to be able to blitz a lot like a linebacker would. So he's probably the most valuable position on our defense because he has so many different job types that he'll have to do and do them well and also be smart enough to understand it. And uh, he's by far one of the best guys, if not the best guy, on our defense. 